Hello, everyone, and welcome to Robertson Wesley Scripture Reflection Hour. I'm here with several people who are also on Zoom, so you're going to hear some voices from other people who are with this group every single week. Um, if you would like to join them, you can always ask us for the link, and we will send it to you, and you can do that through the office at Robertson Wesley United Church. We use a technique called Lexio Divina, where we're going to read through a scripture three times. Each time we do so, we are going to focus our attention in a different way. But in order to begin our time together, we like to create sacred space and to acknowledge that God is present with us. And so if you have a candle or something in your space that helps you to kind of go deeper, I encourage you to do whatever works best for you. So we're going to light this candle remembering that God is with us, that we are not alone, and that God provides us with guidance and support and courage. And this is a time where we will listen deeply together. Hello, Richard. Richard says hello to everybody. Um, all right, we're going to join together in our prayer that we begin our time together with. So let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. God of all creation, we offer you our thanksgiving for a time rich with connections among each other and with you. We thank you for moments when we have experienced what it is to be united, even in our differences. Help us to grow as a listening, discerning, learning people. Help us to give up patterns and structures that enslave us and others. Help us to acknowledge our fear and lean into your hope and your courage. Help us to grow, us to grow in, in our trust in each other and in your, your spirit. spirit. Fill us with your, grace, us with your grace and, and with, with your, your wisdom, wisdom, with your patience, with your patience and, and with, with your, your love. love. Propel us into the future, into your future. rooted in the richness, in the richness of our past. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so the scripture passage we are going to read today, this is one of the ones that we will use on Sunday. The passage comes from the Gospel of Mark, and we're looking at chapter 9, Mark 9, 38 to 50. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and feel free to follow along in whatever Bible you have, or just simply listen, whatever works best for you. You can also find Bibles online if you ever wanted to, to explore some of that. Um, Mark 9. Yeah. So the first time we read through this, what, how I'd like you to focus your attention as you listen deeply to this is what feeling is evoked for you. Again, this is a spiritual practice, and so what we're working on and we're none of us are perfect but what we're trying and striving to do is after each round really listen to what other people are saying without commenting on what they're saying until the last round so after the third time of silence that's when we open it up to more discussion so we're really just listening deeply to how the spirit is speaking through each and every one of us and we we do encourage you if you're online to add your comments in the comment Oops. box and I will share it with the group. So, this first time through, consider how it makes you feel. What feelings arise for you um, as you hear these words? And it says, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. 
For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put up a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, you, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. So what feelings are evoked for you? As you hear this passage, we're going to spend some time in silent reflection and then we'll share with one another.
So we've just read through the passage of Mark once, and this first time through we were wondering what feelings were raised or were felt as you heard this particular passage. So I'd like to open it up, reminding those of you on Zoom that you were muted. So how to make you feel today? It made me feel, how am I going to get through all this? <laughs> well, it left me feeling perplexed because I find it uncharacteristically harsh on Jesus' part. Usually he's very reassuring, you know, saying to people, go your faith has made you whole but um uh to me th this is out of character with him um and i don't know how to account for that but there but so much is is covered in that in that passage I feel in this passage uh, that I feel distressed and unsettled. Um, as I read it, I felt, <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to say this, I felt amused at first. I thought, is Jesus pulling their leg? <laughs> and But then... You know, because I felt that way, then I felt fearful because <laughs> because because I thought it was like, oh, am I being too too casual and sacrilegious? And I felt some fear as well because this is one of those scriptures, you know, heavy. So so amused and then fearful. <laughs> well, and I went from grossed out to. Uh relieved so and that's because i was reading it and i was like having a hard time like just it's not something you typically read so um yeah it was uh interesting so we're gonna dig a little deeper into this one because as karen pointed out it's chocker box full of stuff um but this time as we read through it i want you to focus on what word or phrase is just staying with you um what word or phrase just won't leave your mind and then why that might be so read through this a second time and i will try not to laugh this time ah so the gospel of mark chapter 9 starting at verse 38 to 50 and it says john said to jesus teacher we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us but Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? 
have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. So what word or phrase is catching your attention and why might that be? We'll spend some time in silent reflection and then we'll share with one another.
So we've just read through the passage of Mark a second time, and so this time we were focusing on what word or phrase was catching your attention and why that might be. And so I would love to hear both from those of you who are online as well as those of you who are on Zoom. Um, what word or phrase was sticking out in your mind for you? Remembering I muted those of you on Zoom. Oh, what? Be at peace. Which one was Sorry, that, Donna? Donna? Be at peace with one another. Hmm. Is there a reason why? Well, reading through all the rest of it, above it, it just made my heart flutter. Hmm. And 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 I I um, I just needed that reassurance. Thank you. What really caught my attention on the second reading uh, was verse 41. Uh, For whoever gives you to drink even a cup of water only because you represent the name of Christ. Um, I'm wondering if some of some parts of uh, of these passages were later editions. Jesus wouldn't couldn't possibly have known that he would be given the title Christ in the Greek translation. So it seems to me, um, if, if it said in the name of Jesus, um, that that wouldn't disturb me. But. Um, This sounds to me very much as though it's been added at a later date and it could apply to um, some of the other uh, passages that I I found so harsh. Um, I, uh, I chose as well, my goodness, I've lost my plate. Uh, yes, um, the last verse, be at peace with each other, uh, because it was the positive, the only positive one, but I realized it's not, it's not easy, but it might be easier than the previous ones. <laughs> Well, that sounds more characteristically Jesus. The phrase that I took was verse 40, whoever is not against us is for us. I've just been reading a novel and it flipped that around and said, whoever is for us is not against us. (laughs) Interesting. The the one that was catching my attention was if any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, blah, 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 it'd be better for you to be thrown into the sea. Um, And I I think it was this, you know, if you put a stumbling block and thinking about how do we put stumbling blocks in front of the spirit at work, I guess, was where I was landing. why or why do we feel that we we should um, stop somebody that's doing something that potentially is good? Um, what gives what gives us the right to judge? <laughs> okay, with all of that in mind, we're gonna read through it a third time. And this third time through, we're gonna collect everything we've heard so far, and we're gonna consider what message this particular passage might have for us this day and why that is. So what is the Spirit saying to us as individuals or as a society or as a a community of faith? Um, What message are we hearing? So it says in Mark chapter 9, verse 38 to 50, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, 
do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believes in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. So what message does the Spirit have for us this day in this passage? We'll spend some time in silent reflection and then discuss with one another.
we've read through this passage a fourth, our third time, <laughs> um, wondering what message you think it has for us this day. Well, I was looking at that salted with fire and I was thinking it, everyone will be tested at various times and in various ways and um, will those experiences make us stronger or will we be, will the experience weaken our faith and our resolve? Uh, Caroline, I looked at the bottom of my um, uh, uh, Bible here. Um, the uh, it says uh, other ancient authorities either add or substitute, and every sacrifice will be salted with salt. I like that. I don't know whether we're counting up sacrifices or not, but anyhow, every sacrifice. <clears throat> that last phrase, be at peace with one another, reminds me of holy manners. A little bit there. I also like the idea of thinking about stumbling blocks, but it didn't get me anywhere. I, I just thought about it as a good thing to think about. <laughs> Well, may I, may I uh, say, I looked up the message, I keep this with me, and um, um, it, he used um, the words bullying and taking, uh, uh, oh, wait a minute, I've got to find it here, bullying and Oh, oh, bullying or taking advantage of their simple trust. I like that. Be cautious about that. I just did free association in a sense, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I was thinking everyone will be salted with fire, and I thought, well, salt brings out the taste, and I thought, and so to be more tasty would be um, well, more flavorful and, and more more aspects of ourselves. Um, and then, I don't know, it popped in my mind, what would Seamus say? <laughs> and then I just came up with, be kind. Yeah. Be kind. Yeah. yeah, that's what I wrote in one of my notes here. I have a question. Um, the one about, uh, in, uh, in verse 48, where their worm never dies. Um, I need some help on that one. You would and the fire is that. never quenched. Oh, my version say where the embers do not die. Oh, that's interesting. 
and the fire never goes out. So you have the embers and the fire. So that make, that makes good sense to me. I like that better than worms. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I'm in a contrary mood today. But on the third reading, I started to laugh at the imagery of having a millstone hung around one's neck. And the millstones that I have seen are all about six feet across. I mean, <laughs> it just it seemed to me so ludicrous. So what the spirit, I think, is saying to me is sort of just disregard the rest and stay with the last verse. Let there be salt in you and be at peace with one another. Yeah, it's funny because the, the first time I read through this, I, I really was kind of grossed out. And the idea of going to hell just seems so, as you say, Karen, foreign to what Jesus talks about. Mm. And I, I kind of look at the absurdity of this, the extremism of this as a reminder that it's not our place to get rid of somebody's instinct or childlike innocence. Like thinking about, you know, somebody who didn't follow Jesus didn't mean that they didn't know what to do that was right. Like if they were choosing to love someone, why would we stop them from doing that just because they didn't follow Jesus? So thinking about the saltiness and, and how, you know, diversity is so important. So it's really not our place to try and make everyone like us. And so I think for me, I'm going back to, I think the scriptures from the last couple Sundays that talked about, you know, don't show partiality to one person over another. So, you know, is it just that the disciples were okay to, to do these acts of love? Um, or can we all do that? And, and Jesus logic around, Hey, you know, if, if somebody's going to do this in, on my behalf and they're doing good in the world, more power to them. Like it's not going to reflect poorly on me because they aren't going to fight me later. Um, I, I think sometimes that we, we mean well by saying, Oh, we aren't, this person isn't doing it in the way we expect, or this person isn't doing it the way we think they should, but it doesn't mean that they shouldn't do it. Like I, I just, to me, it's when people like feel that spirit and they just feel compelled to do something. Why would we feel we have the power to stop them from doing that? So yeah, I just, it, it, I really hadn't spent much time with this particular passage before. So it was really, really interesting to kind of go through it all. And there have been so many people in the world who um, were not Christian, who still have done a lot of good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so this is going to be contrasted with the story of Esther. And so if, if any of you have the opportunity to read the book of Esther, which is quite short, it's the one book in the Bible that does not mention God at all. Um, but it's a great story and we are going to hear it told by a great storyteller on Sunday, which will be lovely. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll be fun to see, you know, the, how this speaks to Esther's experience, um, in life. I love the story of Esther, so I hope you will take the time to read about it. Um, before we end, I always, oh, go ahead. I I always sympathize with Vashti in the story of oh, Esther. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to let you all know I'm going to be away next week, so we're not going to have scripture reflections next week, but we'll start up again the week afterwards. Um, but feel free to do the practice on your own at home. You all know the process, and you can always email each other or have a phone conversation about what you discovered. And yeah, I hope people will join us at 1030 on Sunday so that we can hear what others have to say about this particular grouping of scriptures. But as a way of closing our time together, I would invite us into the Lord's Prayer using what is the language of your heart. So let's pray together. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for those of you who joined us online, and hopefully we'll see you on Sunday. Take care. Bye.